In chapter five, we're going to be thinking about the relationship between psychology, physical health, stress, and anger. And stress and anger are related to a whole series of different diseases, some of which maybe make sense, you know, chronic back pain, for example. Others like colds and heart disease um, and cancer and MS, maybe not so much. Although those of you with disorders like diabetes and MS, um, rheumatoid arthritis have probably been encouraged to monitor and decrease the amount of stress that you're experiencing. So why might this be happening? At least one way of thinking about this is in terms of the general adaptation syndrome. Uh, that prolonged stress or over the course of prolonged stress, we experience a drop in immune system functioning and resistance to the psychological and physical effects of stress. Um, that's a, a you know, very good explanation. Um, if we're thinking about the cardiovascular system, certainly one part of what happens in the cardiovascular system is that some people develop uh, much greater amounts of cholesterol and fatty deposits than others. But those people with moderate or high amounts of anger are much more likely to have heart attacks than other people. So we're talking 36% increase for people with uh, moderate amounts of anger and three times as much for people with high amounts of anger. So why might this be? There are a whole series of things that might happen here. You know, it might be that the physiological reactivity in terms of stress causes wear and tear in the cardiovascular system, heart, um, veins, etc. It could be that exposure to self-imposed stress may be high because hostility and anger lead to interpersonal difficulties and that that hostility can undermine the social support from others that buffer the effects of stress. Finally, it could be that people who are cynical and hostile and angry may have poor health habits. You know, they may have, may not exercise, they may eat too many fast foods, and they, you know, they may not engage in all the proactive coping that we talked about in chapter four. And they may deny symptoms that might um, be intervened with better and early. All of these things together lead to an increased um, incidence of coronary heart disease. Take care. I'll see you in the next video for this chapter. Bye-bye.